Hello, welcome to Natasha's Creations. So I wanted to do a video on Emily Dickinson. I used to live in Amherst when I was really little and I still grew up going to church in downtown Amherst and going to all of the little parties and activities on the commons. And Emily Dickinson was always kind of this hometown legend. People call her the myth. I also played her in a live murder mystery last year. Unfortunately, her house is closed due to COVID, but I was able to go get some pictures and videos of the outside and I still have some photos from a trip that I took there with my friend and cousin when I was in college so that should all be good for this little travel vlog. Emily Elizabeth Dickinson was born on December 10th, 1830. She had an older brother named Austin and a younger sister named Lavinia, and the kids were pretty close in age. Her family was really prominent. Her grandfather basically founded Amherst College, and her dad was an Amherst College trustee and a lawyer, and she also had an uncle who was a Massachusetts state representative, a senator, and a congressman. Her grandfather built the homestead in 1813, and this was the house where Emily grew up in for most of her life. For a while, she and her parents and siblings lived in a bigger mansion on Pleasant Street, but that has since been torn down and a mobile gas station sits there now. Emily had a really close relationship with her father even though he was away a lot and she described him as very warm and caring. Her mother, on the other hand, she described as cold and aloof. Her dad also gave her a Newfoundland, Newfoundland dog named Carlo that she used to take with her on walks through the fields and the forest in Amherst. Emily was a super sweet and well-behaved little girl and her aunt, also named Lavinia, said that she had a real talent for music and for playing the piano. Her father really wanted to push education for all of his children, so Emily's primary school education was considered ambitiously classical for a Victorian girl. She then went to Amherst Academy for seven years, which was an all-boys school that then started letting girls in, and now it is Amherst College, which is right in downtown Amherst, like right next to the commons and right near her house. 
As a kid and a teenager, Emily was actually really social. She had a lot of both male and female friends, and she might have even been engaged to one of Austin's classmates, George Gould. Later in life, she also contemplated marrying Judge Otis Phillips Lord, but unfortunately, they both died before that could happen. He also lived in Salem, Mass., so it's unclear whether she would have actually made the move. In school, she loved botany, and she considered science and the natural world to be evidence of God's creation. She actually had a pretty complicated relationship with religion though, and later in life she rebelled against the religious revival movement in Amherst. Emily then went on to Mount Holyoke Female Seminary in South Hadley. Now it's Mount Holyoke College, and it's still an all-girls school, but they recently started letting in transgender and non-binary students as well. Emily only went there for about a year though, and no one knows why she left. She did like the girls there, but she never made any lasting friendships. And after college, she moved back to her family home in Amherst, so she basically spent her entire life in her hometown. And to this day, she's known as a recluse, which made my young mind run wild, but it's actually a little more complicated and way less mysterious and fascinating than it seems. <music> With her formal schooling finished, Emily was now expected to take care of the home and she hated domestic work, like absolutely despised it, especially cleaning. But she did really like baking and she was really well known for her cakes and her breads and she loved spending time in the kitchen. She was also really annoyed with the sheer number of mind-numbing visits that she and her family were expected to make and receive. Visitors to Amherst College, members of the Whig Party, and legislators were expected to stay at the Dickinson's family home when they came to visit. Emily soon became very bored and overwhelmed by all her social obligations, so she started limiting the number of visits that she would make and receive, which I guess is how she became considered a recluse because her family was such a high social standing that they had a lot of social obligations and it was really weird that she decided not to comply with those. She did remain really close to her family though and she was a confidant and a counsel for both of her siblings. Her sister stayed at the homestead with her, they both lived and died there and neither of them ever married. And her brother and his wife Susan built and lived in the Evergreens right next door. Emily was also really close to her sister-in-law, Susan. Her brother also had an affair with Mabel Loomis Thomas, and the book Amherst does a great job of telling that story. And it was actually Mabel who helped Lavinia get Emily's poems published after she died. So Emily's neighbors considered her an eccentric. There were rumors that she only dressed in white, no one really knows how that rumor got started, but I don't think that was true. But she also never married, and she refused to leave her room to greet guests when they came over, and she mostly kept up with her friendships through lots and lots of letters. I think a lot of these things are considered pretty normal these days, like being an introvert and mostly keeping up with your friends through text or social media, or not being interested in marriage or children. But back then, these things were considered very strange. Emily spent a lot of her time writing poems and letters, and a lot of her poems were also considered unique and eccentric for her time. They featured short lines, no titles, unusual punctuation and capitalization, and slant rhymes, which are words that have similar but not identical sound. Her poems also mostly dealt with death and immortality, nature, society, and spirituality. I've mentioned that spirituality, society, and nature were huge themes throughout Emily's life, and so was death. She experienced a lot of it growing up from her friends and family. She even lost a young cousin and later on her two nephews. And the house on Pleasant Street was right next to a cemetery. 
So she spent a lot of time thinking and writing about death and immortality. Emily wrote almost 1800 poems in her life, but during her lifetime she only got 10 of them published. And those that she did publish were often heavily edited to fit conventional poetry norms at the time. Emily actually handbound 40 volumes of her poems by folding and cutting and sewing pieces of paper and then copying the final versions of the poems onto them. It wasn't until after her death in 1886 that her sister Lavinia found all of her poems and had them published, though a lot of them were still heavily edited. It wasn't until 1955's The Poems of Emily Dickinson that a complete and unaltered collection of her poetry was published. The homestead was eventually sold to another family, and in 1965, it was sold to the trustees of Amherst College, and a couple years before that, it was designated a National Historic Landmark. The Evergreens remained in the family and is still completely furnished by the Dickinson's 19th century furniture and decor. Austin's daughter, Emily's niece, lived there her entire life, and her heirs kept the entire place intact. If you're interested in learning more about Emily Dickinson, you can visit emilydickinsonmuseum.org. And there is an Apple TV show called Dickinson that's kind of about her. Uh, apparently it is a wonderful mess of a show. Very entertaining. I haven't seen it because I don't have Apple TV, but I really want to. It's not very historically accurate, but I think it's a pretty good portrayal of how ahead of her time she was. So if you like this video, please subscribe and give it a like, and I will see you in the next video next week. Have a great day. Thank you.